Welcome everybody to this new unit. It is called Define Scenario with Modeling and Simulations. Our first video is about introducing the scenario planning and deployment of the models. First, we will start with a recap of the models. What have we seen about modeling so far in the other two units? Then we will talk specifically about model selection. How can we make a bigger model from all the smaller model parts to reach a more complex objective. So, what have we seen so far? This is the image of the model library as we've seen before. Here we have classified our models by time scale, whether they are in a strategic level, in a tactical level, or an operational level, or by the level of aggregation, whether they are zonal level or in a partial shipment level. We have also seen before the different types of models that we have, whether it's an IG-based model, a demand model, an optimization model, or a KPI model, for example. All of these models, as we've seen before, have their strengths and, weakness, uh, and weaknesses. So by combining them, perhaps we can get a stronger model that gets reach all through the different timescales and to different uh, weaknesses and scopes of the models to get a better representation of what urban logistics means in the city environment. The first step before selecting any model is to understand what we want to do with it. So, in this case of Digital Twin and of the Living Labs, the customers, the public authority, the transport service providers, the shippers, the shops and all the relevant stakeholders get together in order to gather the set of measures that they want to take, measures or policies, and to obtain certain outcomes of interest that are the KPIs. So, in a way, all of them, they get together and uh, as a user of the Digital Twin, you have to select the models that are able to reflect the objectives of the stakeholders and to translate it into models that can provide these outcomes that then the stakeholders can take can make uh, decisions on policy and on whatever they prefer in order to maximize their objectives what i have mentioned before can be summarized in the following flowchart First of all, as we mentioned before, the Living Lab has to provide the measures and objectives of whatever they want to test in our digital twin. Then we have to see which models suit or can provide these outputs in order uh, for us to test. If there is such a model in the model library, then you can start by selecting that model. If not, then you have identified a gap in the library and then you, you have to include or propose start the process to include the, the model. Once you have selected the first model, you add the model to the sequence. Then you have to see what are the inputs that are needed for this model. In this case, are they available? Can you upload it directly to the digital twin or can be measured by sensors or whatever input source you have? Yes, then you have to input them and um, you can start uh, running the model and obtaining the output. If not, you can check if other model can provide this input and then you so you have to you can you are able to generate a sequence of models if they are not available or no model can provide this output then you have to look outside the model library and you have identified a gap and, uh, on the models and you have to uh, start the process of including the models in the model library this last selection, adding to the sequence and checking the inputs, is a recurrent uh, process and you have to do it until you are satisfied and you have all your inputs covered. Once all the inputs are covered, then you have successfully created a scenario and you can run it and tune your city. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please don't hesitate to contact us if you have any doubts or questions regarding this topic.